mid-April through mid-May love readings. My love readings run from the middle of the month to the middle of the next month because we have these videos here, the career and money readings, as well as your general readings already. And so this kind of keeps you on track as the month goes on. This is for your moon sign. And I know you're like, why? Why not my Venus? Why not my sun? This video right here is gonna tell you exactly why that is. Just trust me, it's gonna resonate more. Um, you'll know why if you watch that video or you know, just trust me, whatever. This month, I'm gonna use a couple different decks and my awesome assistant might kind of edit into the video here what that will, what they look like, okay? And then in the description box below, if you're wondering what that is, there's links there. Um, and if you click on the link and you wanna buy one, I, I'm not selling them, but it's their affiliate links, which is great for me because I have to make money, you know, as well. So hopefully that'll work. Uh, what else? Let's just get started, I guess, then. Um, so the way these love readings work is we're going to look at predictions for singles, couples, and then for those in it's complicated situations. So you might be polyamorous, you might be in an on again, off again relationship. Maybe you're just talking to each other, but you haven't really met yet because of coronavirus. And so you're wondering what that's gonna be like later, you know, when you can see each other, whatever. Um, I'm gonna break it into those three categories and we're gonna look at what the general vibe is this month, what you, um, really want, or at least what you think you want, then what do you actually need? What's going to be the best thing to happen in your love life this month? And then what's the biggest challenge going to be? And then kind of just overall general advice. So let's get started. Aquarius. So Aquarius moons more specifically, I guess, if you want to be a rebel and watch this for Aquarius sun, like whatever you do you, but it's going to be more accurate for Aquarius moons as I already mentioned. Okay. So if you are in a coupled relationship, if you have a partner, um, the general vibe is like what you're ready for this month. Um, now, what is it that you sort of think that you want this month? And they're saying, well, you want happiness, okay? And then you want to be in service of your partner. You know that when you make your partner feel good, that you're gonna feel good, you know, in response. Not only because you did something nice for somebody else, maybe you took something off of their plate, decreased their stress, made them feel happier, but then when they feel happier, they treat you better and then you're happier, you know? What goes around comes around in a committed relationship. So. Um, I want you to note that when you are feeling happy, especially in service to other people, then that's kind of a sign that you're on the right path. So this doesn't mean give and give and give of yourself until you're fully depleted. No, only giving if it makes you feel good, okay? Um, so what is it that you actually need this month in your relationship? And they're saying, well, so they want to bring up the the um, conversation about coronavirus, they're saying it's making it challenging to start conversations. Conversations about what? And they're saying you already know, um, and it's gonna be a little bit different for each of your individual situations, which is why they don't bring up a topic specifically that's better um, discussed in a personal reading. Uh, however, they're saying the point is to talk about injustices. Now, Aquarius is generally, um, care a lot about injustices and what is fair and what is right and all of that stuff. And so it's like, it's hard to talk about that right now. Well, why is that hard? Because um, the focus always comes to what's imbalanced in our day-to-day -day life, in our routines, um, you know, with our finances. And maybe there's not much that you can do about that right now. Um, but should you talk about it anyway, just because you need to talk about it, even though there's no way to resolve it? And they're saying it doesn't really um, affect your marriage in the long term. However, you might just want to wait until all of this kind of passes and becomes more easy for you um, to talk about when there's maybe a little bit more hope, okay? So even though this is something you need, it might be something that you want to maybe process on your own or think about um, how you're going to bring it up later, okay? So, I mean... It's, I am here basically to validate that you're right, you need this, you need to have these conversations, but also to say, 
it's not necessarily helpful if you force them with your partner this month. Now you might want to go watch their love reading if you know what you should know what their moon sign is probably and um or you can find out there's actually a, a couple links i think in the description box as well to find that out if you know your partner's birthday so um yeah i i think maybe that would give you more insight here on how to handle that specific issue um what is going to be the best thing to happen in your love life this month and they're saying, you kind of already know. Despite what other people say, you can feel it. Like you have intuition that's kind of telling you. And it's it's nothing that um, is affected by coronavirus stuff. Um, it's about feeling successful within your relationship. It's about what your partner gives to you that kind of builds you up and makes you feel good. So for example, um, let's say you took on a home improvement task and your partner is like, wow, I didn't know you had to, knew how to do that. And that looks really good. And I'm super impressed. And, you know, then you can go make a Facebook post about how loving and supportive and um, appreciative your partner is or something like that. And then everybody else is like, oh, I wish I had a partner like that. It's that kind of a thing. It's just going to feel good. It's going to make you feel really good about your relationship and about your life generally. So what's going to be the biggest challenge for you in your relationship this month? And hold on. There's a couple things. They just jumped right out of the deck. So um, the thing is, is that you are not going to feel, you know, as much like your life is what matters the most, which is, um, and it's not to say that you're an egoist kind of a person or, you know, you're self-absorbed or whatever, but Aquariuses kind of need their own space. And it seems like this month, um, it's going to be hard because A, you're not necessarily given as much of that space, but B, because you, um, because your partner and your, you know, if you have a family, they just need you a little bit more. And um, I mean, it's not like you're gonna feel ashamed or have regrets about that or be annoyed by it but it is going to be a little bit challenging because your personality type kind of just needs their own space and time sometimes, you know, to kind of um, almost like purge the energies that you pick up from other people, like how empaths need to do. And so if you need to take time to yourself, it isn't something that you should need to request, you know, typically. And it isn't something that you should need to apologize for typically because you have your own needs. However, the guidance this month is that it says fucking apologize and then it says, seriously, just do it. And it's it's not because that apology is necessary, needed, or warranted, but it's because of how it's going to make your partner feel, even if you don't fucking mean it, okay? So, so that's kind of the guidance for you here um, in regards to what's going to be challenging. It might be hard for you to do that to say, I'm sorry, but I just need, you know, 10 minutes by myself with my book. Um, you know, do should you have to do that? Hell no. But does it go a long way in your relationship? Absolutely. And so even if you don't mean it, just you know, start that conversation with, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then, but, okay. Um, is there any overall advice for those of you in coupled relationships? And they're just saying, you know, um, sometimes, you know, there are things that we put from our relationship kind of like behind us we're like okay you know like we're just gonna move on from this but then there's that little bit of fear that history is going to repeat itself or like different things are gonna happen again or different conversations or you know whatever are gonna come up again and they're saying try to face these head on and kind of just talk through it while asserting your boundaries this month you know if your partner says something like oh well you always react this way um you can say okay, well, I hear you, I understand why you feel that way, but I need you to know that this is the most functional way for my emotional well-being to sort of work through these things or handle my stressors or whatever. Um, you really have to assert what it is that you need 
while validating your partner. That That's the biggest challenge, or even the people in your household, because for a lot of you, this reading is not only for your romantic love, but for the love within your household, if you also have children or maybe you know parents that live with you or something like that, okay? Now, moving on to those of you that are single, what is the overall vibe for the month? Um, you have all the information that you're gonna have, okay? So if, you know, maybe you're talking to somebody and you're thinking, mm, I don't know, I think I need to get to know them more, I think I need to ask better questions or give it more time, no, your impression that you have right now is actually accurate. Um, but, you know, if you're not talking to anyone, whatever it is that you're feeling about your love life, like maybe you're like, you know what, I thought I really wanted a partner, but right now I just want to focus on what I want to do and I'm not really that interested. Um, but maybe I should explore my options. No, if you feel that way, you don't have to, okay? Um, so this is kind of a month where you want to really, tr the vibe is to trust your intuition because it's not like m more insight is going to just show up, more details, more facts. You go with what you already know because this is what you're going to know about whatever your situation is. So what is it that you think you want? And um, same as couples, happiness, okay? Um, you know, because when you're feeling happy, you're on the right path. And that's, I think, kind of why they started with the information that you already have is all you sort of kind of need right now, okay? Um, so what is it that you actually need that maybe you're not aware of? And they're like, you already know, you know? So for those of you who are have Aquarius moon and you know, you're single, you kind of know exactly what you need, exactly what you want. You have all of the information that you need to make informed decisions about how you want to move forward, if you want to move forward, all of those things, who you want to get to know, what you really think about them, all of that. It's already there for you. Um, so what is going to be the best thing that will happen in your love life this month? And they're saying, you know, somebody's going to mislead you, misguide you. Maybe, maybe it's you misleading and misguiding yourself. But for most of you, it's going to be something else where somebody else tries to trick you, but it doesn't bum you out that much. And I think that's that the reason why that doesn't bum you out that much is because you already had that inherent knowing, right? So for example, this might happen that an ex shows up and they start texting you and you're like, do I really want this? And you're like, eh, I don't really know. Should I give them another chance? Should we wait it out and see kind of what happens, see if they really did change? And it's like, you already know. You already have all the evidence in front of you. And so it's not going to really disappoint you if they fuck it up again because you already fucking knew. Right. And so this is all kind of one big giant cycle here where it's like it starts with, you knowing, and then you can decide, do I really want to prove to myself that I know what's happening? And then at the end, you're like, yeah, I already knew. OK, so it's like you don't even have to waste the time or engage in that if you don't want to. It's not necessarily an X for any for everybody, but it's that same vibe. It's like you already know the outcome. So like, you know, why are you wasting energy on this? And if you already know the outcome and it's positive, same thing. You know, for ex I don't know how many of you watch that show, um, 90 Day Fiance. Um, there's a spinoff called the Happily Ever After version. And, you know, there is this couple where this girl, her husband, like her family doesn't trust him and they like hire a private investigator. OK, so. Um, she already kind of knew that it was bullshit and her family's being like crazy town. So then why did she go to the meeting to with the private investigator, right? Like it's just a waste of her time, a waste of her energy. It's just something to fight about with her husband later. It's bullshit. It's that kind of thing, okay? Like you already know for better or for worse. And so you're just wasting time and energy if you're not trusting that. Um, so the biggest challenge for you this month um, is letting things go. It's time to move the fuck on if you have that ex show up. Um, but also kind of just taking that information that we already have, like trusting our intuition and just going with it instead of like trying to acquire more knowledge and information before acting on it, okay? And so the advice generally for you then, if you're in a, in, in a on again, off again, or kind of relationship, you know, any sort of complicated situation is just to heal, is just to accept things as they are and move forward. So um, 
you know, but I mean, also, you know, if you're single, like healing from the past and what it is that you've learned and what it is that you know and moving forward. Okay, so now moving on to um, on again, off again relationships. Now, the reason why I did yours last is not because I love you less. Actually, sometimes your readings are more exciting than couples and singles. Um, but uh, it's because oftentimes things will pull from both coupled Aquarius moons and single Aquarius moons and kind of um, you you can add on to your reading and enhance them based on your personal situation with that. So um, if you skipped ahead to this portion, then maybe if this resonates for you, you wanna go backwards and listen to those, maybe not, whatever, okay? So um, it's complicated, polyamorous, on again, off again, maybe it's not Facebook official, anybody like that, all right? Um, what's the love vibe this month? And asking for help from other people. Help with what and from who? Okay, help with people who are super open, super vulnerable, and are, and are already kind of like healing things in their own lives, in their own relationships, or have really worked hard to get there, but they're really open and they're sharing that with you, okay? And they share that kind of vocally with other people. And um, the people that you should be doing this with are people who have been in your life your whole life. You know, um, like, so this would be siblings. This would be parents. This would be grandparents, cousins, lifelong friends, you know, like your bestie since kindergarten. Or, you know, maybe it's somebody you met more recently, but you kind of know that they're going to be in your life a long time. It's those lifelong, solid, secure relationships. It's not just like that one bitch who's always like p putting her laundry out on Facebook, okay? Um, so that's kind of the overall vibe. So what is it that you think that you want? And for a lot of you, it's like a lot, it's not necessarily about the relationship. For those of you, it's saying, um, you know, if this were upright, your mantra would be, I'm attracted to those people who serve my highest good. Um, and so for some of you, you're contemplating, does this work for me? Is this the right thing for me? And it doesn't necessarily mean, um, you know, that and the other person or people involved aren't good people, but it's like, does this really work for me? Okay, and so it's kind of like coming to this conclusion where you're thinking, hmm, I might not wanna be in this situation anymore. Or maybe I don't want this situation to be the same as it is. Maybe I want it to change to some degree. But you know, what is it that you actually need? And what you need is security long-term, which is probably why they said, hey, let's talk to the kinds of people that are in our life for the long-term. And then maybe kind of assessing these people who are forever in my life you know, especially the ones that I've chosen to be in my life forever, not, you know, the family I'm born into. It's like, what do they all have in common? And why do I value them? And what are their traits? Because then I can take that information back and I can go to my relationship situation, my complicated thing, and kind of determine here, you know, is what I want what I really want? And, you know, if I want change to happen, why why is that? And is it for my highest good or it isn't it? Um, actually, I will have a link in the description box below on my website. You don't have to put in like, you know, all this like bullshit, like, hey, get my free thing and put in your email so I can spam you all the fucking time. You don't have to put in your email or anything. Um, but on my website, there's a page called freebies and there's a link below and there's actually a worksheet there. It looks like um, this and it helps you kind of assess what it is that you want in relationships as well as your life in general. And it might be helpful for you. So you can just download it without, you know, me capturing any of your information if you want to. Um, so what will be the best thing that will happen in your love life this month? And they're saying, that long-term secure, I know what I can count on vibe. You know, that big future planning for yourself, but also for the people that you care about, romantic or otherwise. They're saying um, 
you know, and this is not in a material or financial way. Oftentimes when that card pops up, they mean like, hey, let's think about our long-term investments. Like, can we figure out how to save for retirement? And should we buy a house? Nothing like that. It's about the security of who's going to continue on, who's going to be in your life for the long-term, you know, and choosing the people who should be there. Um, so what's going to be the biggest challenge for you um, to, that you have that you're having a hard time letting go of people who maybe don't need to be there anymore and um that maybe it's kind of funny to you you're not taking it seriously enough um and you know oftentimes we use laughter to cope with our pain or as a way to avoid feeling and really hurting you know when we're in those moments and that's why they say laughter is the best medicine however for you it's like okay but these situations that are not that funny that like day-to-day -day stress us out are going to continue to do that if we keep laughing about it and not really facing it um so that's going to be the biggest challenge so as far as advice goes oh my gosh they're like hold on we have so much to tell you um, and then, you know, they throw all this stuff on the floor that they want to tell you. But on top of that, they give me a nice big fat stack of challenges that they further want to go over with you. So give me a sec. Okay, so um, first thing they say, the challenge is to be open to speak about this with other people, like how they initially mentioned. And then they say, after that, then manifesting, okay, what is it that I think I want? You know, how do I get that? Um, there's also a, a freebie that tells you how to do that too, and even identify what it is that you want. Because the problem is you're not thinking about what you really want because you don't want things to end. You don't want things to necessarily change. I mean, you want them to change, but not drastically because big changes are hard. But here's the thing, for some of you, what you and the people you're dealing with um, this month, you know, and when I say month, I mean the rest of this month and then the first half of the next month, you just don't want the same things and it's time to maybe look at that. Um, if you can do that, then you can come out of this very successful, feeling very self-assured. Other people will be proud of you. Other people will admire you. It will help you to maybe find the next right thing. If you just go, this isn't maybe the happily ever after that I'm hoping for, or that I'm wanting, um, because then that allows you to plant seeds that can grow into something bigger and more beautiful than you thought possible potentially with somebody else. Now, if, it's, if that's not the conclusion that you come to, if it's just that like, hey, this person should be in my life and I wanna keep them around forever, then they say, okay, now let's break down the details of what's going on here in this relationship and where do I need to maybe um, take some space and rest and um, have some like alone time and pull back a little bit. Now, it's easy for you to maybe feel smothered and this is the part of the, um, couples relationship that you might want to pay attention to. Now, if you feel like you're being misled, um, taking some space to step back, and, or if you think you're being lied to or betrayed or whatever, like somebody's being sneaky, step back and see the situation from a different perspective. Um, maybe how other people would see this if you weren't so closely involved in it. Because when we get hyper-focused on things, we can become paranoid. And it's not to say that um, you know, this isn't happening for some of you. Maybe this would maybe be personally dealt with better, like a personal reading. But, um, you know, we might be lying to ourselves about how we feel and what we think and what we want, as well as um, about the intentions of what other people are saying and doing. OK, um, not necessarily in a bad way. You know, I might be lying to myself and saying, my partner, or I guess maybe not my partner, this person that I'm talking to, or my partners, or whatever your situation is, um, they just don't find me attractive. You know, they don't think I'm worth very much. When it's really the opposite, that they love to be around me and that's why they're with me. And you know, um, they're, they're super attracted to me or whatever, but my own self-esteem is what's leading me to believe that. And then I'm lying to myself. Does that make sense? So anyway, um, 
they say the other big challenges are those of you who are stuck in situations that feel kind of toxic and maybe the situation isn't even the relationship itself but your own thinking about it you think you can't break free of that you think you can't get out of it but actually you can um you're just refusing to see it because you're used to it uh the other challenge is to you know, feel a lot of joy and love in the situation as well as for yourself and think about how that matters most as well as trusting your own tuition and then taking the actions based on what your intuition is telling you and feeling super confident about that. Now it's healthy to have a little bit of suspicion or doubt, okay? But you really truly and fully need to trust your own self um, once you kind of work through the steps that I've laid out here for you, because that's how you fully and truly show love um, to yourself and how you honor yourself so that other people can mirror that behavior and treat you the same. Does that make sense? So that is end of April, first half of May. I love you so much and I'll see you next month. Mm -hmm.